Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team. Wanted to make this video on how to do a one cancels the other order or OCO order in Think or Swim for credit spreads specifically. So this is after you've entered into a credit spread and you want to buy the contract back at 50% of profit, let's say. So if you want to, you know, you know, you entered in a credit spread, so you're selling at first, but then you're buying back at a lower price. You want to buy at 50% of profit, as well as if you want to put a sell order in, or again, buying if it goes against your position. So kind of doing both sides of the trade, right? So kind of having two orders, one when you hit your 50% of profit, and the other one, if the trade goes against you, how much are you willing to lose? So you can put an order in the system to do both, right? Whether the trade goes for you or against you. So if you're at work or you can't watch your position all the time, you could put a good to cancel order in and have one cancel the other. So whatever one goes first, right? You obviously don't want to do these orders blindly. You want to obviously know what you're doing. Uh, but again, trades can go against you at any time. There's definitely some more risk when you put that stop order side uh, into the position, which I'll show you. Uh, so there's ways to do either a stop market, which again, that's where you could be very risky. And with these spreads, they can get very wonky and it can fill at a bad price. So you can take a hit on that side of it, or you can do something like a stop limit, put a buffer in, uh, so if the trade goes against you, you can kind of uh, give yourself a little bit of a buffer. So you have to be be, be careful with these, these stop orders or with any stop order. Uh, but this is a really good strategy to have. So when you can kind of put that gauge, you know, set up your limits ahead of time when you're getting into these spreads. So you don't have to think, you know, in the emotions of the trade, if it goes for you or against you one way, you can know from the beginning of your trade, okay, what is your risk parameters, right? Do you want to sell at 50% of profit, 55%, 60%, whatever your range is. And then what is the most that you would ideally like to lose on a trade? So what's the most you want to go in, you know, take that loss and then put it together so that after you fill that order, you can put this one cancel the other order in so you don't have to think about it uh, afterwards and you're not getting caught up in the emotions. So let's take a look at how to do that. You'll see I'm in a credit spread right now with Home Depot. So you'll see I'll just open up this position right over here. And you'll see right over at this point, this is where I'm gonna right click right up here and I'm gonna click create closing order and I'm gonna buy it back, right? So I'm, I sold, I'm in a credit spread, so now I wanna buy it back. I sold it originally, buy it back. So sell high, right, and buy back lower with credit spreads because you want that spread to fall down, right? So you'll see I entered into this uh, credit spread right here at $1.32. I want this mark to keep falling down so I keep the difference between that trade price and mark price. So if I'm selling at 50% of profit, I want to see what 50% of this $1.32 marker in. And so, you know, we'll do that first. We'll put the buyback vertical. And you'll see down right over here, it defaults to single order. This is where you want to go down here and put one cancels the other. So OCO. And after you have OCO checked off, this is where you wanna right click right down in this area here and click create duplicate order. So now you're gonna have right down below here, two orders, right? So let's pull up a calculator here and let's do the math. So you'll see I got into this trade at $1.32. So if I got into that at $1.32 and I want to buy it back at 50% of profit, then I would do 1.32 divided by 2 equals 66 cents. So I want to buy it back at 66 cents and that would be 50% of profit on the trade. So the first part of this order, I'll just put... 0.66 right up here. So if the trade goes in my direction, you know, I'm going to buy it back at 50% of profit. But now you got to determine right here, if you're doing this OCO order, what's the most that you're willing to lose on the trade, right? So for the sake of this, 
you know, I'll say um, the most I'm willing to lose is let's say a hundred dollars on the spread. So if the most I want to lose on this spread is a hundred dollars, then all I need to do is just add a dollar onto my trade price, right? Because one dollar times a hundred shares is a hundred dollars. So if this trade goes against me and instead of the price or the trade, you know, the price of the um, spread falls, if it starts to go up because it's going in the opposite direction of my trade, then I want to cover myself and protect myself from losses. And if I can't look at my screen, let's say if you're at the work or whatever is going on in your life, uh, you want to kind of protect yourself. So then, you know, in, in this scenario, I would just come down here and I would put it at $2. I would actually change this right here. Order to now here's where you go to stop or stop limit, right? I want to use a stop limit here so it doesn't fill at market price because market price could be, you know, again, at any it, it, anything can happen with market orders. Now, you should be fine many a times with some of the larger cap stocks and spreads. But again, spreads at any moment can change and get really wonky. So you ideally want to have, you know, kind of a you can set up, you know, a stop limit and have a buffer. So here is where the trigger would start. So if I clicked right here and I put that two dollars and thirty two cents here, this is where my trigger would my um my stop loss would start or it triggers at the mark, which is the mark is the midpoint of the options contract. So above here where it says limit, this is where I could put a buffer and maybe go, let's say, 242, right? This is where you can change up or down. It's all your preference. So this right here says, okay, if the mark hits $2.32, this is where it's going to trigger but the most I'm willing to take a loss on it is a 10 cent buffer. So that would be 242 or 242. So that would be $110, right? So this would be, ideally I'm looking to only lose 100, but I'm willing to go up to 110 because again, I just added 10 cents. If you wanted it to be exactly a $100 loss, then you could do this down here to let's say 222 and then this right up here at 232. So this would be, okay, the mark when it hits 222, if it hits, it's gonna trigger my stop and the most I'm willing to lose is let's say $100. So again, it's a matter of your preference on this, but for the sake of this order, I'll leave it at 232 and 242. Obviously you're, you're doing your proper technical analysis and you're entering into trades. Ideally, you're looking to win on them right you're not looking to trade blindly uh, but this is where again how the oco order works with a stop limit with a buffer so these orders that you put in you know this oco order could give you both sides right so if the trade goes for you you know it's going to automatically put in that order to sell right here so here's 50 percent of profit if it goes against you this is setting your defined uh, risk or what the most you're willing to lose. Again, it still could go against you, but this helps to limit it. Ideally, you want to look at your spreads often, you know, look at them throughout the day. But, you know, if you can't, uh, this is where you would want to have this OCO set up. And here's where you can see over here, very important. If you want to have a good to cancel order in, so right here, this defaults today, this to the day time frame. So this means this is only good for the day that you're putting it in. If you do GTC or good to cancel, then this order will be good and it'll stay in the system uh, going into the future. So you don't have to watch it each day. You can have a good to cancel order. So that way you've, you've entered into the trade, you're setting your risk, you're setting your percentage of profit, what you're willing to risk to get out. And then you go and you confirm and send. And if you can send this order into the system, which let's see if I'm gonna order put that one in to the system. Yep, I'm gonna do that right here. So I'm gonna place this order at 50% of profit, and the most I'm willing to lose is between 100 and ideally, you know, no more than $110 right here. And how I did that was just add on 
a dollar over to the trade price because a dollar times 100 shares is 100 bucks. Again, you can set up your own, what you're willing to risk and lose, all that good stuff. So I'm going to confirm and send. Obviously, you can see all the breakdown right over in here. This is putting the order into the system. This order is not going to fill right now because there's nothing to fill uh, because it hasn't hit those marks yet. So you'll see now when I go back over to the monitor position right over here, you'll see my order in the system right over here. And what you could also do right up here, if you wanna see where that order is right over here, you, so you see it down here. If you wanna see the breakdown of it, you just click up on working orders up here and you'll see here's the mark of the midpoint of the options contract right now, which you'll see right down over here. And then you'll see I have an order in right here at 60 cents or 66 cents and then 232. So this is a working order that's gonna stay up here. It's good to cancel. So now this is, again, this is enabling me the ability to walk away from my computer, not have to be tied to it. Again, anything can happen to a stock at any time or an option. Again, uh, that's where it's important to have your proper you know, parameters uh, set up ahead of time. So again, you don't have to put these orders in the system, but this is very helpful especially if you work a job or you can't be tied to your computer all day long. It enables you to set that defined risk, take your profits along the way, and to remove the emotions of trading options and spreads. Uh, again, you can do this for all, all, I'm just showing you right here for credit spreads. I'll do more videos on debit spreads and all that good stuff for you as well. But this is specifically for credit spreads. So. Hopefully this video helped you on doing OCO orders and Thinkorswim with credit spreads, and I'll see you in our community. Enjoy.